This is the Growth and Value Podcast, empowering and inspiring stock investors, helping you take control and make a difference with your investment dollars. Looking for quality stock tips? Well, we may or may not be talking about Apple. We may or may not be talking about Google. We may or may not be talking about Disney. However, since we use our proprietary algorithms to screen, analyze, and rank over 6,000 stocks every week, we will be talking about timely investment opportunities. So you may often hear the name of a company you haven't heard of before, and you know what? That is often the best kind of opportunity, an opportunity to get in early before the investing masses. The Growth and Value Podcast is made possible by Connor Management Group, a registered investment advisor firm. Hi everyone, this is Mathis Connor with Connor Management Group, and this week we'll be looking at the best small cap stock to buy right now. Today is Tuesday, February 24th, 2015, and here on the opening slide, we see that this company is in the railroads industry, and we see its six-month upside potential at 34.0%. Not a, not a bad amount. Uh, going on to the second slide, and we see that the name of this company is called the Greenbrier Companies. Uh, the ticker symbol is GBX. Uh, the industry, once again, is railroads. And yes, to our surprise, you don't think of railroads as having nice upside, but we see this company's upside, six-month potential upside at 34.0%. On to the quick facts slide, we have a business summary for the Greenbrier Companies, and here it is. Uh, the Greenbrier Companies uh, designs, manufactures, and markets railroad freight car equipment in North America and Europe. Its manufacturing segment offers double stack intermodal cars, tank cars, auto max rail car, uh, multi max auto rack, and flat cars for automotive transportation, conventional rail cars such as box cars, covered hopper cars, center petition cards, bulkhead flat cars, cars, and solid waste service flat cars. Uh, the company's wheels repair and parts segment uh, provides wheel services, including reconditioning of wheels and axles, new axle machining and finishing, and axle downsizing, heavy rail car repair and refurbishment as well as routine rail car maintenance and repair, refurbishment, and retrofitting of rail cars for third parties. And its last third segment, uh, its leasing and services segment, offers operating leases and by the mile leases for a fleet of approximately 8,600 cars. So Green Prior Companies consists of three uh, different uh, segments, the ma its manufacturing segment, its wheels repair and parts segment, and its leasing and services segment. Uh, the company's website is www.gbrx.com. Uh, the company's headquarters is located in La Lake Oswego, Oregon. They were founded in 1974 and they have 9,244 employees. Uh, On to the products and services slide. Uh, and what we have here uh, is the Greenbrier Company's logo. And uh, we have a couple uh, photos of some uh, rail cars, uh, including some uh, cars that could possibly carry oil or, or other uh, chemicals. Uh, we have a photo of uh, someone doing some welding in one of their shops. We also have a graphic showing their three, their integrated business model showing their three segments, manufacturing, wheels repair and parts and leasing and services. Uh, additionally, we have a map that shows their operations uh, across North America, and including some locations in Mexico, but they have uh, quite a few operations uh, uh, throughout the Midwest, uh, and I should say throughout the mid part of the northern and southern part of the United States, as well as quite a few operations on the west coast with just a few sprinkled here there on the on the east coast uh, additionally we have a graphic that shows the projected demand for north american rail cars and how it's expected to increase above the average for the next uh, four years uh, and additionally we have an excerpt from one of the latest uh, investor uh, presentations and this excerpt shows uh, management's highlights of the drivers 
behind their business. And what they've listed as the drivers are shale, oil and gas revolution, changing tank car regulatory environment. Uh, another bullet is broader growth in intermodal automotive loadings, commodities, and housing. Uh, slowing rail car velocity. Uh, aging fleet, another driver. And also another driver, strong railroad uh, balance sheets and capital expenditure uh, budgets, which is good for them since they are a rail car manufacturer. They don't uh, run the uh, uh, rail cars, they simply manufacture them. Uh, additional drivers are, especially for their wheel uh, repair and parts segments, uh, wheel demand is driven by stabilizing coal traffic, crude oil trains, and intermodal traffic growth. Uh, increasing ton miles and equipment upgrades as driving repair spending and they're approaching subs uh, substantial tank car uh, maintenance cycle uh, additionally uh, they have here changing tank car uh, regulatory environment and there's also a graphic on here showing the strong uh, projected growth increase for uh, rail cars uh, additional uh, graphic and excerpt from the presentation is kind of a summary of the drivers. Basically, solid rail co car backlog. They they say that they have a very strong uh, backlog of rail car orders. Uh, diversified revenue streams, as we just mentioned, they operate uh, in three business segments. Uh, strong balance sheet, uh, liquidity. Uh, the company's financials, which we'll get to, is solid, but they may also be referring to the strong balance sheet of the uh, rail car operators that would uh, order these cars manufactured by Greenbrier. And additionally, they have here listed as strategic initiatives that they're undertaking, highlighting uh, initiatives that they're working on to improve gross m margins and capital efficiency. So that's what we have for the products and services slide for Greenbrier. Uh, on to the metric slide. Uh, what we have here is the annual revenue over the last 12 months for Greenbrier was $2.2 billion. Uh, the net income was $128 million. And the cash from operations was $96 million. Uh, the operating margins uh, for uh, Greenbrier uh, in 2014, they were 10.8%. And for 2015, they're tracking to be 10.5%. I mean, that's, that's effectively flat in my book. Uh, on to the valuation metrics. The trailing P.E. ratio for Greenbrier right now is 16.4. And the forward P.E. ratio is expected to be 10.2. And that implies that analysts expect earnings to increase significantly over the next 12 months. Uh, the peg ratio is at 0 0.9. Anything at 1 and less is usually a, a value bargain. Uh, the price to sales ratio is at 0 0.7 also a bit low and the price of book is at 3.1 and the enterprise value to EBITDA ratio stands at 7.3 uh, the dividend yield for Greenbrier nothing to write home about but it's something is at 1% and the average dividend payout ratio for the company is at 5.0% over the last three years that's the average uh, on to the next slide we have a uh, the price chart for Greenbrier and basically uh, the this shows that the stock for Greenbrier has already increased 45% over the past 12 months. Uh, 12 months ago, the stock price was around 40, uh, and then six months ago, it topped out around $75 or so, and the stock has since then pulled back to around the uh, $60 uh, level. So the, the stocks had a, a strong increase. It's, it's pulled back a bit from there, but we think that this is uh, at a, a good entry point. And because of the projected strong earnings, we uh, think that this is a, a nice value and a good opportunity to buy on this pullback from its, its high six months ago. Uh, on to the next slide. We have it, the, net, the title of the slide is called the Why Now? The bull rationale for Greenbrier, and the main reason for why we see uh, this stock as uh, a buy right now is increasing sales and revenue. Uh, Greenbrier's uh, domestic business 
uh, uh, given some of our comments before, as expected to to drive growth. Uh, additionally, um, the company uh, made an acquisition in South America, and they're expected to start to uh, reap some of the benefits from that acquisition uh, in, in, in South America. America actually it was a partial acquisition. They made a 20% stake at a Brazilian based company called Amstad uh, Maxion. Uh, yeah, Amstad Maxion. Um, so, those are, that's one reason for our uh, optimistic look with Greenbrier. And additionally, it looks like they will have a low uh, projected valuation metric, which implies it would be a good time to buy right now. So it's really two simple points, strong projected strong increases in sales and a projected low valuation metric into the future, which, which should be strong drivers for stock appreciation. On to the summary slide. Uh, what we have here is a, a look at some of the uh, over high level points for Greenbrier and the financial statement quality we have listed as good. Uh, the company uh, it can uh, manage uh, it, its, its debt. Uh, the amount of debt they have due in the next five years is at $281 million. And right now they're projected to uh, earn about, just say, around $200 million in profit uh, over their, uh, the next few years. So technically they could take care of their outstanding debt over the next five years and two years. So we, we, we feel their financial statement quality we can classify as good. The operating margin trend, as we mentioned, is flat. The price pattern trend has been increasing. The stock's increased over 40% over the past 12 months. Uh, our overall market outlook is, is somewhat bearish. We're just not seeing as many value opportunities as we have in the past. So that makes us a little cautious, but we don't expect this to be a particular uh, headwind uh, for Greenbrier. Uh, as mentioned, the recent closing price of Greenbrier was $58.65, and our six month price target for Greenbrier is $78.31, and this gives the company a six month upside potential of 34.0%. So uh, it is for all these reasons that we believe that the best small cap stock to buy right now as the Green Variety Companies. We hope you found this presentation helpful and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye. Hi, this is Matt Connor from Connor Management Group and I just wanted to take a few more minutes to give you some background about myself and Connor Management Group. Uh, first of all, if you enjoyed this podcast, and I, I hope you did and you have been over the past uh, few months or so, uh, please write us a review on iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, we really would appreciate it and it would help us get uh, more subscribers. So uh, that's something uh, we'd appreciate. So for the podcasters out there, please go to uh, Stitcher or iTunes. And for you guys on YouTube, uh, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and like, as well as just becoming a subscriber to the CMG Stock Picks channel. All right. Well, that's what I wanted to say uh, with regard to the podcast and YouTubers. Hey, try to be efficient. Uh, but I wanted to share a little bit uh, about myself. Uh, basically, you know, I've been I've been told from some uh, friends and listeners that know me that you know I could uh, enlighten um, uh, my audience with a little bit more about myself. So you know, you know, I'm not all that comfortable with with telling about myself. I really kind of want you to enjoy the content. But for those of you that have an interest, this is why this stuff is all the way at the end. So okay. My name is George Mathis Connor. Uh, my background is that you know I have a bachelor's in mechanical engineering from a place called Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute Engineering School in Upstate New York. A master's in engineering from Cornell uh, University, also in mechanical engineering, and I have an MBA in finance from the University of Chicago. So hey, that takes care of my uh, educational background. Basically, by long, I should see, yeah, I did a lot of schooling. Uh, what my career experience has been uh, to date. I started out my career as an engineer, uh, you know, did a few 
years of that. Uh, worked in a lot of cool landmark renovation buildings in New York City to, uh, for a few years. One of the most uh, high-profile ones was uh, my company, uh, or just the company I worked for, uh, was part of the renovation team of Grand Central Terminal. So for those of you that passed through there, I've spent a number of years in and, every, in and out of every cranny of that <laughs> uh, building and facility. Uh, I also worked as a banker uh, in New York uh, after I got my MBA, and basically I worked on financing a lot of large-scale infrastructure projects, uh, mostly power plants, but I worked on some uh, are basketball arenas as well, and some chemical plants, and, and even some coal mines. I've been deep down in the ground a number of times uh, in my career. Um, additionally, uh, let's see, after that, started working on the uh, investment side of uh, developing power plants, and particularly, I worked, I spent most of my career with uh, a company called Enron, and another company called GDF Suez, where I worked on the development of, of power projects, where we, uh, you know, where I acted as a, a equity investor for whether we were going to build them or buy them or sell them. And after GDF Suez, I am now uh, an investment manager, and basically. You know, I've been studying deals over the years, learning to build complex financial statements, always evaluating them, uh, the cash flows, and, and, and making sure that these things would be profitable. And investing in the stock market was always a hobby of mine that I took more and more serious over the years. So after a, a bunch of time, I just, you know, I'm really going to go after this. And so I spent maybe about, say, three years actually working on the, develop, the development of some proprietary algorithms. I was just convinced that with my mathematics and computer background, coupled with all these financing deals, of which I became very good in, uh, with accounting and finance, I thought that I could at least find uh, one way of consistently finding stock opportunities. So it was the development of these proprietary algorithms and me uh, having some success with them that led me to the development of Content Management Group and the development of all these uh, videos and podcasts you've been seeing and hearing. And, you know, we're, uh, I should say, I am pretty happy uh, with these uh, algorithms. Uh, basically, uh, they review, analyze, and rank over 6,000 stocks every week. Uh, they're pretty comprehensive and <laughs> pretty thorough. Uh, the algorithms use fundamental uh, technical analysis and also consider some uh, macro level measures. And another thing that's pretty unique is that these algorithms estimate future stock prices with specific time horizons. Uh, you know, I haven't seen too many people on the web that will give you a potential stock price, say, say consistently say this is what we expect the price to be in six months or this is the price that we expect uh, there to be in 12 months and uh, I think for most of the um, videos uh, and podcasts that I produce you've always heard me give a uh, stock a potential stock price uh, going 12 months out uh, the the premium uh, subscribers actually give them a stock price uh, for the top stock prices for for six months out um, so that's uh, about uh, what I have to say about the algorithms. Uh, additionally, about Connor Management Group, our primary offering of CMG LLC is that we are a managed account service. And basically, a managed account, for those of you who don't know, is, is basically a more hands-on, customized way of investing for the long term. Uh, it's basically a complement or, or a supplement to a 401k or IRA with, uh, and it has more benefits. And basically, you probably haven't heard of these as, as, as much or over the years because they've just become a lot more available to middle class investors. And that's primarily because of advances in software for being able to handle uh, many clients and move them in and out of, in and out of uh, custom uh, portfolios and options. So if you want to know more about our managed uh, account business, uh, please go to CEO Connor mg.com that's triple w dot connor mg.com uh, or you can go to our website and you can see a presentation that compares kind of management groups side by side 
with other uh, managed account providers. You know, E-Trade provides managed account service. Fidelity does. A lot of other mainstream firms. And like we said, basically now that the technology is advanced with software, it's a lot easier to, to, to manage. So basically, um, as with E-Trade, uh, the minimum size of account we open, uh, say, $25,000. And, you know, while, while as I'd say 10 years ago or more, minimum account size is probably a half million dollars. So there are a lot of changes, and you'll be hearing more and more about this account service, uh, you know, as time goes by. Additionally, let's see. Oh, additionally, you can get to know us through our social media footprint. Uh, basically, we have a presence on all the major websites for your convenience. And there you can get a lot more articles uh, and hear about different points of view uh, on, on things going on uh, in the market. So we have a presence on Twitter, uh, Google+, and Facebook, as well as, as well as LinkedIn also. So you can be kept abreast of our thinking on stock investing, as well as you know, uh, things we share uh, by others who we consider thought leaders. And finally, CMG offers two newsletters. Uh, both weekly, two weekly newsletters. Uh, one is to keep investors up to date about relevant news and provide in-depth analyses on a quality investment opportunity. And you know, that's, and those uh, opportunities are consistent with uh, the the free weekly podcasts and videos. And the other newsletter we provide is our premium newsletter, and that one provides the latest top picks from our proprietary algorithms that we run every week. So, uh, you know, feel free to go to CMG, uh, uh, stockpicks.com and you can go there to subscribe to the newsletters. And if you, uh, go to, uh, the website, you can also view this deck and, uh, or any of the decks going forward. And there'll be a link there to everything I've just talked about, <laughs> talked about, uh, basically everything from, the, the uh, podcast to the newsletter to 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 uh, the presentations about ma our managed account service. So, uh, hope this was was helpful. Nice overview. Hope it didn't bore you. You can listen to, to, to this a couple times. You know that's why I put this at the uh, end of the uh, stock presentation. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.